you're watching it for network. everybody it's your friend dusty out here on the fabulous west coast once again it's a beautiful day here the pegasus side got all the clouds out it's bright and sunny it's about 76 degrees hopefully it's nice where you are because it's beautiful here got out got some mailing done so everybody who's expecting a package from me former winners all this stuff is on the way so sit back relax it's coming no problem your boy dusty takes care of it but here, you're not, you're not here to listen to how I mail things. No, I don't think so. No, not even here to know how I shave my head or anything like that. No. I think you're here because one wonderful actress and singer is with us who's been with us since season one. You might not even know that she's been in there, but she is because she sings for Rarity. And now she sings for Princess Luna, too. That would be Miss Kazumi Evans. Kezu, you there? Hello. Hello. <laughs> hello. Hello to you. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Yeah. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well. And yourself, Dusty? I'm doing wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> because I finally tracked down one of the people I've wanted on this show for over a year. Woo! Miss Kazu. Yes. <laughs> very happy. Amazing to be how that falls together. Because <laughs> you, you signed with my pal Ralph. And I, I, I see that, and I go, Ralph, Ralph, here's some dates. What does she want to do? It's like, yeah, come on out. So, <laughs> that's great. Because we, talk, we talked Equestria LA, geez, almost two years ago. Wow. Wasn't it? It's been almost two years. Since two we, years. Since we last talked. Jeez. Yeah, so that was 2011, 2013, oh, 2011. Gosh, wow. time flies. Time flies. It really does. Time flies when you're having fun. So oh, it does. You've, you've sung so many wonderful songs. Oh, well, thank then. you. Wonderful <laughs> songs. I mean, we're going to talk all about it. But the first thing we're going to talk about, this is okay. my stock question for everybody who comes on now, because we get some okay. really interesting answers to this one. What <laughs> are some of the cartoons and comics you watched or read as a child? Okay, well, definitely I have to say, and I'm not just saying this because I am on the show, mm -hmm. but My Little Pony was definitely number one. I grew up with the original 80s version. Oh, okay. Um, so, yeah, uh, and that, that was definitely one of them. Sailor Moon. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You know, big one. Mm -hmm. um, Care, Bears. Care Bears. Love Care Bears. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to think of any other ones. Um, a lot of Japanese ones, like, of course, Pokemon and... Um, there was one called Unpun Man, and okay. yeah, so a lot of Japanese cartoons on the the Japanese channel because nice. uh, I spent a lot of time with my Japanese grandparents on the weekends. Mm -hmm. But yeah, definitely My Little Pony uh, was one of the top ones when I was a kid. That would that would be interesting growing up, you know, watching a Japanese channel because it have a completely mm -hmm. different um, skew as what they were going to show kids as, on cartoons. You would think. Oh. absolutely. Absolutely, and it's not like you have the language uh, to help you understand what's going on in the mm -hmm. story either. It's mm -hmm. all the animation and just the pitch of the voice, yeah. pretty much. Yeah. Uh, so it, it, it it's definitely a, a different experience than watching a cartoon in English. Mm -hmm. 
I, I, mm-hmm. have, I have to agree because when I first found the movie Akira, um, mm-hmm. you only got English, or not even English, they, they were Japanese, not even dubbed, they were v, VHS tapes. Of somebody, yes. <laughs> somebody had a video disc, put it on VHS, and all, all you got was a VHS of the movie with absolutely no understanding. You know, wow. you, I, I didn't know what that movie was about for years. <laughs> <laughs> I wore that VHS tape out, and I'm trying to figure out what's going on. It's, I know it's some political something or other, but I couldn't figure it out. And then all of a sudden, I got a, an English dub and went, wow, that's completely different than anything I thought was going on. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, no, totally. Like, I, I mean, also... Um... There's another Japanese anime mm-hmm. uh, movie I watched as a kid, and I loved Totoro. Totoro I don't know. Yes. Yeah. My neighbor and, Totoro. Uh, <laughs> and of course, like it was dubbed into English, and mm-hmm. I watched both the Japanese version and the English version growing up as a kid. But mm-hmm. looking back now at that movie, I loved it. I love it still because it's nostalgic for me. But at the same time, I don't know what's going on really. Like the plot is really all over the place. But gosh. <laughs> yeah. I loved it growing up, and I oh, still yeah. do. Yeah, my, my my friend has one of those silk screens hanging in his bedroom. <laughs> uh, my neighbor Totoro. It was a wonderful movie. Loved that movie. Yeah, um, it's sweet. Singing. You've yes. given us some of the one, most wonderful performances of Rarity, uh, uh, all the way back from season one, Art of the Dress. Thank all you. the way back. Um, all the way to the beautiful musical Generosity <laughs> that we just had this season. Um, yeah. How did you get started? In singing, give us give us a little bit of background on where you started your singing career. Where I started, okay. Um, well, I am the youngest of three girls, so I have two older sisters, and um, we all like doing different things. And I always kind of did what my sisters did because I wanted to be like them, and I thought they were really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I was always involved with choir at school, and I always really liked the artsy things, like art class mm-hmm. and. Um, yeah, music, music class or whatnot. And okay. um, one day, uh, my family, like, we went on a cruise for the Christmas holidays. And uh, there was a kids group where, you know, you could drop your kid off. And then while the adults, they could go in suntan or do whatever they wanted. Uh-huh. Um, and anyways, they were having a talent show for the kids on the boat. And I ran to my mom who was sunbathing. And I said, Mom, Mom, you have to make me a costume. And uh, she said, what? I said, you have to make me a costume. I'm going to sing in this talent show um, tomorrow night. And she's like, "Uh, what? Uh, Okay, like, I can't make you a costume. We're on a boat in the middle of the ocean. But okay, what are you going to sing? And I just saw the movie Mulan recently before going on. going onto the boat mm-hmm. and uh, yeah like I was absolutely in love with the song Reflection uh, sung by Leah Salonga mm-hmm. um, in the movie and yeah I sang that and after the talent uh, show there was a woman that came up to my mom and said hey um, you know you're I'm an opera teacher I think your daughter should take singing lessons and uh, my mom <laughs> famously said like oh no 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 she's not a singer she's uh, she just does it for fun it's mm-hmm. just something she's she just does on the side of things mm-hmm. And, um, but yeah, I, I, I kept asking my mom if I could take singing lessons and I, I guess my mom realized that I really wanted to perform and that was just, yeah, something I always wanted to do. And then she's been supportive of it ever since. And whether it's been in the community theater, uh, shows I started out in and then eventually doing more professional theater, uh, in musicals and then, yeah, My Little Pony was my first voiceover animation job. Wow. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Crazy. Uh, So being I just turned 20 Mm -hmm. uh, and was in second year of university, yeah, when I auditioned for the show. And Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, That's nuts. It it is looking back and you you think to yourself, oh, what an introduction and what a great introduction to voiceover world uh, because I do a lot more voiceover now and that's primarily Mm -hmm. uh, my source of work right now but Mm -hmm. back then it was it was mostly theater and um, just starting out in that avenue professionally as well and then I land this great show and and yeah it's been a whirlwind and a great ride ever since (laughs) that that is awesome oh my that, that is a great origin story i mean geez you're out in the middle of the ocean and some opera teacher just happens to listen to you at a talent show how much <laughs> better could it get I mean, really? yeah. <laughs> right place right time right place right um, time yeah like i mean it, after that there was a you know a long there was a long period of time many years in between mm-hmm. that moment and getting 
say my little pony or working yeah. professionally in the yeah. biz but yeah but if yeah, you didn't have that, didn't have that that's, spark right that's where it all started definitely if it hadn't been for that woman who knows maybe i might not be doing this for a career i might be doing something else <laughs> that would that would be sad because <laughs> that would be a sad thing because you listening to you sing is awesome oh thank you very much i appreciate that <laughs> um musicals yes alone i stand generosity the reprise mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the rarity takes it from Manhattan. Yes. Chilling. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Chilling. Uh, when I first when I first heard it, I'm going, I need to sing this. I can't <laughs> I can't sing this because my male voice would wreck it. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. Not wreck it. It would. <laughs> it would. I actually did. I actually did uh, uh, becoming popular, and I put that did up. On my, I did. I'm have to I watch did. That. I put that up on YouTube, and it was it's one of the things that actually made me me. So basically, yeah. some people loved it, and I ended up getting my Scotia popularity from it. But it was like, oh, I really want to sing that. And every time I tried, it's like, oh, it's just not right. But I, I love that piece. Oh, just this, the, the song itself is great, but the reprise at the end is like, oh. And I love musicals. So, oh, um, that, what, that's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. What musicals, okay, yes. are your favorite musicals? Something that would have given you the background to sing this song that, that way. Um, I it, it wasn't it wasn't so much a music. I'll tell you what my favorite mu musicals are first. Um, definitely West Side Story mm -hmm. um, was a big favorite of mine growing up. I'm trying to. I say sorry. I've just all of a sudden drawn a blank. Into the Woods, okay. another great one. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. All of a sudden, when you put yeah. put all this pressure on, name your favorite. Name your favorite. Like, oh, ah! I don't Yes. I don't know if I have a favorite. <laughs> and you're trying to remember, what are the musicals I like? Uh, How about Cats? Cats, I have to admit, I loved that they referenced that in uh, Generosity mm -hmm. in that episode. Yeah. But I have to say, I love the music of Cats. Mm -hmm. But overall, as a, as a whole, Cats is not my f absolute favorite. I don't dislike it, but mm -hmm. it's not my absolute favorite. Okay. Uh, definitely Andrew Lloyd Webber. There's different pieces of his oh, yeah. that I do like. I have to say I do like Phantom of the Opera. Who doesn't? I know that's so typical and everyone always rolls their eyes, but I do. I don't. I do quite enjoy that one. <laughs> I've been trying to sing that. That's a high one. I know. If you're singing Christine. No, or I'm, not, the no I'm not trying to sing. What? Why would I sing Christine? <laughs> no, you sing Christine. I'll sing I'll sing the Phantom or, or, or the Boyfriend, but no. Oh, the, okay. Well, see, that'll work. Yeah. We can try this, Dusty. There you go. Hey, I'm going to write that down right now. Here we go. Yep. Uh, okay. Collab. There we go. Okay. <laughs> oh, I, you know, costume. I would freak out if we did that. Yeah. Okay. You have to do it in full costume, though. Okay. I will. I'll do it. Oh, I'll do okay. it. Okay. That's fair. That's I'll fair, then. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Pony Tones. Song. Pony Tones. Oh. oh. That find, was to record. Find the music in you. Oh, throws yeah. a, a stinking curveball splitter right up your alley by bringing Barbershop Quartet in. Uh, did you have a lot of fun with this? It was difficult. I know you all sang your parts separately because we mm -hmm. talked to Peter New and he said that you guys did not even sing together. No, um, we didn't. Um, we had it just a lot of the times it works in the group numbers mm -hmm. um, that we all sing separately just because it's easier and uh, just everyone's schedule is different, right? right it's hard right. to get for the singing at least mm -hmm. and the music because it does take a little bit more time to record than say if you're just doing uh if you're just speaking a script right. it's right. hard to get everyone in one room at the same time but recording it was so much fun and by the time i came in i think um Derica and peter had already d laid down their tracks okay so i i got to hear a little bit of what the body would sound like once it was mm -hmm once it was released, which was really lovely, but I still sing that song and hum it to myself. There's certain pieces from the show, definitely, that I still hum yeah. and uh, get caught in my head every now and then. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a wonderful little piece of music, and because they showed it three or four times in the show and extended it and extended it, and then by the <laughs> end of the show, you you hear the whole thing with Fluttershy's part. It's like oh. it really brought the whole thing together, and, and hearing Rarity with a high note in the middle go, just sticking your hoof out, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, it's 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 absolutely wonderful, and also just because um, that uh, nowadays I just find acapella groups they're just mm -hmm. becoming a really big thing. So it was just perfect timing. 
on Daniel Ingram's part to incorporate that into the show. Yeah, I mean, he's he's pretty much hit a home run almost every time. I mean, he hasn't oh, he hasn't really made a stinker yet. No, the man's on fire, man's and on he just he fire. he really knows what he's doing, and he really knows how to write good music mm-hmm. and really catchy music. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, speaking of really catchy music coming up, um, we have a movie this summer, <gasps> don't we? Called uh, of all things Rainbow Rocks, yes, uh, Equestria Girls, which is chock full of music. I mean, this thing's going to be music central, mostly rock and pop from the glimpses that we've been given. Um, what is your saying that? Okay, you've you've done now barbershop, you've done musicals, you've done theater. Now you're doing this pop rock thing. What is what is the favorite type of music that you like to perform? I I think for my voice because it's just it feels the best singing it it definitely would be the musical theater genre something like generosity mm-hmm. um like in the style of the reprise or uh the original generosity mm-hmm. song it just that style for some reason i guess just because that's what i started out in this business doing uh it just sit, sits in my voice oh, the yeah. right way that it just mm-hmm. comes out naturally and it just feels really good to sing yeah yeah yeah, that, that, that's, that's pretty cool because after I took up singing again, yes. I, I actually took choir in high school myself. And, uh-huh. and get this, I was 60 voice, ninth grade, 60 voice choir. Yes. I was the only bass voice out of six boys and I stuck out like a sore thumb. Oh. She couldn't get me to sing, you know, tenor to save my life. <laughs> <laughs> she had to write me parts. But uh, yeah, so I, I would go and try to sing, of course you know, some of the stuff from the, from the show and completely could not do it because the voice wasn't there. And I'd go sing, find a rock song that I could change lyrics to. And it was like right in the meat. And I, I, yeah. I still to this, to this day try songs that I know I'm not supposed to do in this voice range. And it was like, Oh, you, it's not that you're not supposed to do it. It's yeah. just, uh, there's just some genres, some songs that just fit a voice better than others naturally, mm-hmm. just because that's the way your voice is designed. Yeah. But that being said, like for me on the show, singing, getting to sing the pop and rock stuff, mm-hmm. um, it's so much fun. And uh, just because I'm classically trained, right. it's just, it kind of feels a little bit naughty. It feels, <laughs> it feels a little bit bad to be able to do that pop stuff and let all of that technique go. Oh yeah. But um, yeah, I, 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 it's been such a pleasure to be able to sing so many different styles within this show, this one show. This one show. <laughs> yeah, it's like mm-hmm. you get all this stuff going on with this one show. It's it's so amazing. And then now you're also singing for LPS, right? Little's Pet Shop. You did. Uh, yeah, I got to sing on one got to episode. Sing for one episode of that, that. so which you know. is really fun yep. too. Like I'm like, this is this is great. <laughs> yep, you more and more, more and more singing work. Um, you've shown us also a bit of comedy uh, with your wonderful collaboration with one <laughs> Mando Pone. Yes. Yes, which was of course called Taylor the Latte Boy. Yes. Which was a freaking complete scream. <laughs> <laughs> it goes it goes on and on and on about the unrequited love of the girl for Taylor and then he comes back and says she's just creepy. <laughs> it's it, it's funny, isn't it? Uh, it is. when, it's hilarious. About, when you have the the original and then you have the rebuttal mm-hmm. next to each other like that, uh, just because when you hear the original for the mm-hmm. first time, mm-hmm. you just think, "Oh, that's just so lovely." And you know, you kind of think, like, as the song goes on, okay, like, you know, she seems a bit obsessive, but no, that's actually quite sweet. Yeah. But then you hear the rebuttal, and you think to yourself, <laughs> oh, wait, this girl's just, she's crazy. Cool, cool. Like, she's stalking this guy. Yeah. And uh, Andy and I, um, when we were coming up with ideas about collabor- uh, a mm-hmm. collaboration that we could do together, mm-hmm. I said, well, I have this great song. And you know what? There's even a guy song that comes after it. And right. it's really, really funny. And he said, okay, I've never heard about it. Send me the tape. Mm-hmm. So I did. I sent him the tracks. And yeah, he just died laughing. He's like, we have to do this. And we just it was just for a laugh, really, for oh, ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then we just thought we should share it with fans. And then the reception it got was awesome. It was, it was hilarious. It was hilarious. <laughs> um, I did a collab with uh, one of the girls from, from Sweden. Uh, oh. which, which was basically a re- I rewrote a country song mm-hmm. for Big Mac and, uh, and for Charlie, and it just went over really well. It's, it's, oh. I, I really need to stick in country a little bit because my country songs are really good. <laughs> I can hear it in your voice, Dusty. I yeah. think you would. Well, I came from Michigan, so rural Michigan, yeah. so I, I could probably pull off country. I can pull off country fairly well. I need to do more country songs. Don't I, people? 
Tell me, tell me in my, my emails I need to do more country songs and I'll do it. Um, so, are you looking for more comedy roles in the future? Is it more fun to do that, like with what we, you did with Mando? Um, in terms of voiceover, or are we talking anything, about... Anything. I mean, because, anything? yeah, anything. More comedy, because it, it seems like you had so much fun doing that. Oh, I do. I do have um, a lot of fun doing the comedic roles, and uh, it helps me bring out my inner dork, because I'm <laughs> definitely a dork in real life. Uh, not like Miss Dainty Rarity, who's very proper all the time. I guess there's times I can be proper, but mm -hmm. definitely I would describe myself more as dorky and nerdy. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> but yeah, there's um, I can't really talk about the projects because nope. they're not yet released but there are shows that are separate of course from mm -hmm. my little pony or whatnot in voiceover uh that are coming out where yes i do have more comedic roles and that dorky or nerdier side does come out in the characters i play yes. um also just recently i did a stage show avenue q i'm mm -hmm. it's a musical i i don't know if you've heard of it oh, but yeah. Okay, great. Some yeah. people haven't. Most people have, but just wanted to make sure. Mm -hmm. uh, and I played Christmas Eve in that, and mm -hmm. that, of course, that whole show, it's, yeah. a, it's a play on Sesame Street, and mm -hmm. it's uh, very comedic. It's very comedic <laughs> and very adult. But yes. <laughs> yes, the internet is four things. Um, yeah. <laughs> not only, okay, we'll go into this then. Not only have you done all this wonderful singing, but a bit of voice acting now, too, because you've been in a Mattel's Barbie DVD movies. Yes, gasp. Yes. yes, I have. Gasp. Oh, working for the enemy. <gasps> and you played Rogue in the Wolverine vs. Sabretooth miniseries. I did. Yes. How does it feel now that you're getting voiceover work on top of your singing roles? Oh, it's, um, it's awesome. It's just such a pleasure to do both and to be able to do both, I guess. And it, the voiceover work, it's a completely different animal than, say, singing on the show mm -hmm. or doing a stage show and it's just a complete different form of acting and I just enjoy it so immensely because all you have is your voice. No one can see your face, no one can uh, see what you're expressing. It's mm -hmm. just all through your voice and uh, bringing a character to life through speech mm -hmm. is just wonderful. Yeah, I've, I've taken a couple of sessions with uh, Michael Dobson over the last week where he's, so. he's helping me with my narration. It's like it's night and day. After two lessons with him it's like, whoa. I've been screwing yeah. this up horribly. <laughs> so, oh, no. it, it's just, it's, again, it's like anything. It takes practice. But, yeah, like for me, I had been singing on the show um, for My Little Pony. And, I, you know, I had mm -hmm. been singing for a long time. So mm -hmm. I just knew what to do when it came to that. But mm -hmm. when it comes to just speaking yeah. and telling a story with just your voice, yeah, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's, a, it's a different tool. It's quite a different tool. Um, having worked for both Hasbro and Mattel. Mm -hmm. Do you have any pull one way or the other on who you like to work for? Are they different to work for in any way? Um, I don't, I definitely don't have a pull uh, uh, to either side. I, I love working for both. Um, yeah, I don't really have a preference. It's not, they're not so much, diff it's not so much the companies are different. It depends on the project you're working on, right? Right. Like, yeah, working on a Barbie movie is very different from working on My Little Pony. Mm-hmm. And um, especially if they're reoccurring characters, then you just kind of know what to do with them. I, I think it's just more so character based, but it doesn't matter what company you work for. It's just you want to capture that one character. Right. So I'm going to put up a, a picture here. Okay. That pro it's probably going to make my, see this? Such as this gorgeous sword in your hands. <laughs> What is this I hear about Chinese sword dancing? Yeah. You've performed in a show called The Forbidden Phoenix. I did a few. Back in 2011. That... Yes, I did. Now, are we going to see Rarity in a remake of Crouching Manator Manicore Hidden Discord? Well, I think you're going to have to you're gonna have to ask the writers <laughs> for that one. I'll definitely be behind that push for yeah, it, but yeah. you'll have to ask the writers for that. Tell us a bit about this ambitious play. The Ambitious Play. Okay. Um, well, it was a play written by Marty Chan with lyrics and music by Robert Walsh. And uh, it was a show. It's a musical, a Canadian musical. Mm -hmm. um, and it tells the story about when the Chinese immigrants came to Canada to build the railroad. Uh, ah. And what they went through and how they suffered. And it's a, it's a really beautiful piece. And it, it, for that role, I had to learn a lot of martial arts and had to do stage combat. 
uh, yeah, so that's why the sword. It's a lot of sword work. Wow. Got a lot of bruises in rehearsals and on shows. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> yeah. If, if you guys want to see some more of this gorgeous costuming, go to Kazumi's website because she has pictures, like 15 pictures up there of, of her in these costumes. They're absolutely gorgeous. I really Thanks. wish I could have seen this this play because it's whoever did the costume work should have won awards because it's gorgeous. Oh uh, right? yeah, and they were it was really comfortable too. It was, oh, it, nice. was a, it was a great costume for sure. Yeah, because it's it's really I really did anybody DVD that? Did anybody take video of that? Because I'd love to no, see it. because when it's it's a professional production and uh -huh. there's all the copyrights to it. Yeah. So the, you know they took a video. Um, for just their own records for the theater company's records but right. no we would be able to get public access to that unfortunately darn. i know darn. shucky darns um yes. okay uh next one this is one I'm, i don't know if you actually go karaoke do you go karaoke i've been once oh, okay so i gotta ask this so yes. you've only been once so when did, yes. you, when did you go did you like oh. did you go up there and sing and blow people away did you do that? Well, I think it, it wasn't actually at a real karaoke bar or place. It, uh -huh. it was so just at a friend's house, and it was her birthday, and she had a karaoke machine. Oh, okay. Attached to her, her television. Oh, all right. And, um, yeah, so she was just like, okay, because I mean, it's your turn. And, mm -hmm. yeah, I got a good round of applause, and mm -hmm. they seemed to like it. They, oh, good. I... I <laughs> I, d I don't know if I was any good. I don't really remember at the time. <laughs> oh, cause I, li I like to go to karaoke shows and actually pick really weird songs. Yeah. That for me to sing. You know, that's it, like, uh, I'll sing Elton John. Oh, Elton John. Yeah. Love him. I'll sing Elton John. Uh, or uh, what did I sing? I, uh, I think one time I went up and sang uh, I Will Survive. Oh, see, that would be really yeah, funny. That would be funny. That would be awesome. Or I go, I go up and uh, just do weird stuff with my voice. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love blowing people away doing that. It's just like a voice artist. Yes. Um, Luna finally gets to yes. sing. Oh my God. Uh, when approaching a new character to sing for. Yes. Um, do you try to get into the character's head at all? Because you've been rarity for so long. Now Luna comes up. And says, oh, you're going to be singing for Luna. Luna still a bit apart from equestrian society and a bit of a loner. Did mm -hmm. that sort of affect your idea of how to perform her as a singer? Um, well, definitely, yeah. I, I definitely want to know all that information before going in and, and, and recording for her. Because, yeah, like the lyrics that she says, uh, you'll play your part, I understand you wanting more. Mm -hmm. um, chance to fly, a chance to soar. Mm -hmm. um, because of all the things she's been through uh, in the past seasons, in the past episodes. Right. Um, so that information is very key. But as far as, uh, and yes, of course, that, that helps the interpretation part mm -hmm. of the singing. But really, for for Luna, uh, it was more so just really trying to not make her sound like Rarity. <laughs> I think uh, that was one thing uh, that I didn't I didn't want to happen. Uh, you know, it, it, it's a little bit difficult because, of course, as we all know, their voice yeah. Rarity and Luna, their voice by Tabitha. Yeah, they're very and close. Now, yeah, it, it, yeah, it is very close. Mm -hmm. And then myself, I sing now sing for Rarity and Luna. So mm -hmm. just trying to not make them sound alike and give Luna her own, mm -hmm. her own, uh, her own legs. Her own singing. voice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the things that you like to do in your spare time away from acting and singing? What I like drinking tea. I'm a real tea buff. Mm. Uh, yep. Yep. I love going, love going to the movies, drinking tea or just staying at home in my PJs, drinking tea. Um, if it's a day. Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> And um, running, I'm a big runner. Okay. I love to do that. It's a real big stress relief for me. Um, yeah, and, and apart from that, just uh, hanging out with friends and whatnot, and writing. Writing's another big one Ooh. for me. What do you write? I I write short stories. <gasps> I I hope to write a novel one day. <gasps> Is yes. there anywhere we can find these little short stories? Not yet. Oh. Not yet, but um, I'm aspiring to that. That's something I would like to do. Oh, we'll make sure we know, because we'll, we'll promote it. Thank you, that, Dusty. That we will. Um, <laughs> have you kept up with our burgeoning fandom at all since we've seen you last? Uh, because all the music that gets made is huge. Lots and lots of music. And do you have any favorites of the music that you've heard so far? Of my own music? No, or of, of our music. That? The fandom's oh, music. The fandom's because music. Because we, we do everything from high opera to punk rock around here so is there any 
fandom music that you've heard that really sticks with you? Well, I was watching the Brony documentary the other day. I I believe I mentioned uh, that to you in Twitter, mm -hmm. I think, the other day. And I really was quite blown away by what the Living Tombstone did with mm -hmm. um, just kind of the remixes and whatnot and just the electric music. Right. Um, but and I know other Bronies have done it as well. I'm sorry, names are is kind of escaping That's me right now. That's fine. But, yeah, it's just the remixes mm -hmm. uh, and the electric music, I mm -hmm. think, are really what blow me away and just really impress me how people just, they, they take little bits of songs and then they just mash them together and it just sounds completely different. Completely different. Mm -hmm. nice. Yeah, so I was there when, I was at that BronyCon when Discord went off with the big bouncing of everybody and everybody bouncing, because that building, actually the parking garage was underneath it. Oh, wow. Okay, so the cement floor was moving. Oh, gosh. Like a foot. With everybody bouncing. It was like, I'm going, I'm going down. This whole place is going down in a few minutes. <laughs> it, was, it was almost bad enough that you were, you're, you, it was bouncing back and you were going off your feet. You, you basically had, you had to balance yourself because the floor was, was, was moving so far. It was crazy. It was the craziest party I've ever been to. It was great. Amazing. Oh, that's wonderful. That was amazing. So we are at commercial time. So oh. we are going to, again, have a commercial. Um, when we come back, we're going to talk about uh, upcoming convention season. And then we're going to talk some charity. And then we're going to get you out there in the TV audience with Screwball in the chat to have some questions for this lovely lady as soon as we come back. So sit back, relax. We'll be Thank right you. back. <laughs> Since the beginning of time, the elite of Equestria have longed for pony fashions that truly express the essence of their very souls. Patiently waiting decades, no, centuries, for the perfect pony gown. Today, at long last, Equestria, your wait is over. Let's hear it for the breathtaking designs of Pony Bell's own Rarity! Certainement, Spike. All your ponies. Be sure to visit the shop in Ponyville. For the rest of us, be sure to pick up the t-shirts, the bags, or even the posters from willowfine.com. That's right, willowfine.com for all your pony needs. And remember, Carousel Boutique, where every fashion says chic, unique, and magnificent. And that is a rarity's a carousel a boutique down there in Ponyville. All you in Canterlot, make sure you go to the store down at the mall because she, she just now opened that one. You know that mall over the back side of Celestia's school for gifted unicorns back there where they just built that one. It's actually an A six. A six is where the new outlet is. So you want to go down there and check that out in Canada Lab. But if you're a human being, you want to go to welovefine.com because they have all your pony swag going on. So they have all the new stuff. The contests are going on. Leakfish is doing well. Make sure you go check out her stuff. Um, I love Leak stuff, so you know, pump her a little bit more. Um, so go to welovefine.com, sponsor of this very up program. And with that, we go on to convention season. TrotCon is this weekend. TrotCon, June 20th through 22nd, Columbus, Columbus, Ohio. Guests are Andrea Libman, Peter New, Heather Breckel. Pixel Kitties, Bronies for Good will be there. Silver Slinger will be there. Emily and Tay of Pegasisters Live. Pony Toast, Dennis Daniel of Cantalot Radio. Animated James, who's done commercials for us. TJ Carson of Ask Pirate Dash Blog. And now, M.A. Larson will also be there. Uh, Everfree Northwest is coming up July 4th through 6th, Sedaddle, Washington. Guests. Uh, let's see. Kathy Westluck, Marika, Gilda will be there. Georgia Ball, Heather Neufer, Michael Dobson, Rebecca Sochet will all be there. I'll be there. My girlfriend will be there. So come and see us. Uh, BronyCon. 
coming up August 1st through 3rd. Bolt de Mer. Guests are Andrea Libman, Tap of the Sink, Jermaine, Rebecca Soichet, this little lady right here, Kazumi Evans, Josh Haber, Daniel Ingram, Leo Award winner, Daniel Ingram, Terry Klassen, your voice director on the show, Andy Price, Heather Breckel, Tony Fleece, Katie Cook, Claire, and Ian Corlett. And now, just announced. A big Jim Miller will be there. You should go, because it's going to be huge. Nightmare Nights, October 24th to 26th, Dallas, Texas. Guests Tabitha, Britt McClip, Full Papers, and moi are all going to be there. Uh, more, more, more. Crystal Fair, Brony Expo, Fiesta Equestria, Buck, Grand Brony Gala, Galacon, Brony Can, oh. Chequestria in Czechoslovakia, Brony Fanfare, Sydney, Sydney, Australia, Lunafest, Ponyville Cider Fest and Brony Scott in Scotland. Anywhere on this big blue marble that you live, I bet you could drive to one of these. Don't miss one, because it's all kinds of fun. Ah, charity time. Charity time. So Amy's Epilepsy Foundation of California. We raised 1,021 bits. That is above and beyond the Call of Duty. Thank you very much, everybody. Oh, man, just freaking awesome. Um, so... For giveaways on this one, we had this stuff over here. We had five packs of the collectible guard game from Bot117 over in England. Thank you very much, Bot. We have the GM barrel card for that very game, which you can only get from GM. That. We have issue, what is this, 13 of the My Little Pony comic book with Amy Meberson cover. Uh, so that is also going to you. And the reading is magic. GM Barrow. Pixel Kitty's art, signed by GM right there. So that is also going to you. But because we broke 500 bits, you get this little Funko Pinkie Pie, who is Amy's favorite character. And not only that, but this Crystal Applejack, which has been going for three digits over on, on eBay. So I got one of these for you. So that's going to go to whoever's name I draw out of this hat. So we're going to mix these up really good. Mix them up, mix them up, mix them up. Okay, mix them up, mix them up. I'm going to pick this one right here. Uh, who is this? Latent Logic. Latent Logic is the... Well, Latent Logic. But he is the winner this time. So I will contact you, or you can contact me at dusty at manliesbrony.com. And we will get that stuff to you. Thank you very much, everybody, for your support once again. Let me put my hat on. But like my Black Bart hat. Oh, this one's good. This is actual felt, too. It's nice. Feels good. Ah, so, next, we go to Kazumi. Kazumi, eh? Yes. Yes. So, your charity is the Alzheimer's mm -hmm. Association. So, tell yes. us a bit about why Alzheimer's is so important to you. Uh, it's very important to me because uh, my grandmother, my dad's father, uh, mom, just passed away back in February from it and she suffered uh, from Alzheimer's for over 10 years and uh, unfortunately my other grandma on my mom's side uh, has the beginning stages of it mm. and it's such a sad disease to watch your loved ones lose their memory and eventually not even remember who you are in the end and uh, I just if if there was a way to possibly fund research so that we could find a cure so mm -hmm. we could have an Alzheimer's free future, then I'm all for it. Well, that's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do right now. So, Thank you. for anything at all, if you go over to manliesbrony.com, click on the link. Remember to register at manliesbrony.com. Register at firstgiving.com so that I can find you when you win. We're going to do this. We're going to do another five packs of the card game. These are going to continue to come from Bot117. I'm going to continue to give them out. So, five packs of that. Now, I got something special for you. Because we're doing music, because Kazumi is here with her lovely voice, I got a couple of special things here, which were sent to me by my good friend Bojo Pigeon in Japan. Okay? Everybody knows that Japan had its Japanese dub, right? So how about this? How about a couple of CDs from the Japanese voice actresses actually singing... The ending and the beginning themes. And they changed it a couple of times over the season. So, I got this one. And this one is from Suzuko Miramore, or Zuki. 
Um, this is a limited edition. Not only is it a DVD, CD, but it's got a DVD also, which will play on your on your computer. It won't play on your DVD player here in Region 2. So play it on your DVD player. So this is awesome. This is rare. And I also have from Suzu, uh, Su, Suzu, also another one. She also sang. She sang, let's see, close, the second closing theme in the season. So I've got these for you. These are, you're never going to find these, okay? Unless you've got a Japanese friend, you're not going to find them. Um, so that is for you if you give us anything at all. Now, if we break 500 bits, I think Kazumi wants to kick in something. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think, Kazumi? I, I do. <laughs> what you got? Absolutely. Um, I will donate a signed, my own personal high, signed headshot and a rarity toy Ooh. autographed as well. A rarity toy autographed. woo hoo, -hoo. That is going to be awesome. So she's going to get that off to me because I know we're going to break 500 on this one because we we not broke 500 not, except for like once the entire time we've been doing this. So she's going to get those to me and I'll have them here for you. Okay. And awesome. yes, maybe I can get uh, maybe I can get Pixel Kitties to uh, do up a piece of art. Who knows? But she's actually going to TrotCon this weekend. So she might be tied up a little bit. But I'll see if I can get her to maybe, maybe do you one for later in the convention season because I'm, I'm sure you're going to get invited to go somewhere. I'm sure. All you pony cons <laughs> out there. This woman needs a plane ticket to somewhere because we all want to meet her. We do. And that is charity for the week. Oh, you know what? I've got something special for you, Keizu. Our friends yes. our friends at FloodyCon, Mexico City, uh -huh. last weekend, actually yeah. did their own charity, their own charity auction. And they came up with 3,900 pesos, which is about 315 bucks. And they will start what? this charity run with $315 just for you. <gasps> That's wonderful. Thank Absolutely. you. So that is Brony Chef, our good friend, put that together. So we are going to get that 315 bits right into the charity right away now. So I know we're going to hit that 500 bucks because we're already more than halfway there. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Absolutely. So now what we need to do is we need to find Screwball. Because he likes to go and play his games, and he likes to listen to his music, and he misses his cue. It's like, where is he? He's over there. Where? Where? Kazumi, call, call Screwball. Was that him? Was that him? I think no. It was. No. No, it wasn't. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, you know what, Dusty? You're always, you're always I like my games. music, and I like my games. You're always off playing games. And all that fun. Actually, I've been doing a lot more. I've been doing a lot of hunting now and soon to be fishing and stuff. So, fishing. Because winter hunting is my fishing. video games. Yes. Now, hunting yes. and fishing season. Oh, oh yeah, definitely. What are you fishing for? Um, Compliments? Anything that swims. <laughs> <laughs> anything that swims. That's isn't, a good one. Isn't there, isn't there like licenses you have to get for fishing? Uh, yeah, it's usually here in Alberta. It's roughly maybe eh, 50, 60 bucks, yeah. roughly. I still and have to catch, stop the. You can catch whatever you want. Oh yeah, definitely. Oh okay, because yeah. At least I believe so. I'm gonna have to ask my dad because he's the <laughs> fishing expert. <Okay. laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna buy a sixty dollar license. I don't even know what I can fish for. Wow. Okay. Just it'll say it'll say right on the license uh -huh. whatever swim. <laughs> <laughs> Well, guess what, buddy? We're we're sitting here waiting for questions. I'm sure you got a bunch got, of questions for this nice, lovely lady. I got a bunch of questions. I have to prepare myself once I crew. <laughs> um, but actually, you know, I have one question for Kazumi, Kazumi for myself. Um, when I told my mom uh, that your name was Kazumi, where does that? She she was baffled because she's never heard your name. It's so unique. What what, what does that? Uh, Where's that from? Oh, where's it from? Okay, well, I'm half Japanese, so the name, uh, the origin of the name is Japanese. Mm -hmm. uh, so my mom is Japanese, so it's from that side of the family. Ah. Mm -hmm. I like That's why. I, I, I always love your name because so, so, it's so, so unique is, that I can memorize it. So what does Kazumi mean in the Japanese language? Um, I've been told, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty, uh, I've been told from a good source that it's me, uh, Kazu. Uh, means peaceful, and me uh, at the last part is beautiful. Ooh, so, nice. So peaceful, That's beautiful. Is peaceful, good, beautiful. But it's to... I can see it now. Don't know. <laughs> Don't know if it's true, but you know that's what they I say. I think it's true. I think it's true. I think it's true. I think it's true. Oh, uh, stop. You think it's true? Stop. Therefore, it must be. Oh, uh, you guys. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Questions. Uh. 
So Scribble. this one Read. is from Farmane. Uh, question for Kazumi is... Um, I'll, I'll put exactly how he says it. Um, I have a wood ca a carving 101 pen on BronyCon, and I'll be doing a cutie mark, uh, doing a key mark as the demo piece, which will which will be Princess Luna. Could you and Tapitha sign it for the charity auction? Absolutely. Absolutely. Done. Yes. Awesome. See how easy He'll probably is. contact you easy through Twitter. I'm guessing so. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, absolutely. Done. I know Tabitha and I love doing that sort of thing, so anything mm -hmm. for the fans. Yes. Awesome. Uh, so this one is from... Oh, so this one is from Trailblaze to Kazumi. How nervous were you when you sang for Luna, and did you know about the big following Luna has? Um, I wasn't nervous when I, I recorded it, mm -hmm. but I do recall now that you bring that up, Daniel Ingram, after I recorded it, he said, oh, well, you know, this this is quite a big deal, you know, and I said, what, what, what do you mean? And he's like, oh, well, you know, Luna, uh, she, uh, this will be the first time she sings on the show, and Luna herself, as a single pony, has a really huge following. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, you know, I kind of shrugged it off at the time, but I think the closer it got to the air date and the more of uh, the fans that kind of tweeted me about it, because I mm -hmm. guess they had seen little snippets or previews, that's when I started thinking to myself, oh, okay, like, this is a big deal. I wasn't so much nervous. It was just so. Uh, it was more so excite, excited, nervous in a way. Yes. Just to see how it would go over. I suppose. Excitement. Oh, yeah. I, have to, yes. I have to go fan crazy, but you did an amazing job singing as Luna. It's Thank uh, you very that, much. that 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 song was the best song for me because it had the princesses all singing it once and everything, and it's one of those tear jerkers for me. So it's like, my lord, it was so good. You did a good job. Thank you very much. It, it was great to be a part of that piece because that finale was a really rockin' finale with the other singers involved. It was great. Yeah, on top of having a freaking, you know, Kamea Kamea, you know, fight scene at the end. Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> Dragon Ball Z. Fight. I'm gonna kill you. It's like, don't mess. You don't mess with my books. I will kill you. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. She wasn't. She wasn't. No, the handcuffs were off. She was not. No, he was going down. <laughs> There was no sending him back to Tartarus. He was just, no, 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 no. Don't mess with me. <laughs> Next. Um, so, one, one second. Ooh, uh, so this one's from uh, Striker H. Uh, uh, Kazumi, what is your favorite part about singing for My Little Pony? What is my favorite part? Um, getting res the response from the fans, definitely. And uh, hearing stories about how maybe a piece of music has whether it's sung by myself or not, um, or just the show itself has changed their life. Uh, definitely watching uh, documentaries on the Bronies or just seeing meeting fans in real life. It, that in itself is the biggest reward I could ever ask for. And definitely that's my favorite part, seeing the response of the fans, for sure. Wait till you'll see the new one, uh, A Brony Tale, where we follow, uh, where we follow people around. Yeah, that one's going to release here in July. Oh, I'm very excited. I'll yeah. definitely be watching I'm, that. I'm excited for it, too, because I've seen it twice now. I, I was actually in Vancouver a month ago to, to, for the, the festival up there that it uh, premiered at. So I was, like, really excited to be there. Wonderful. What's, uh, well, what, what time in July will it be out? Uh, first week of July is what I'm being told. So unless that changes, I'm not sure. But uh, there's also something big going to happen at the BronyCon that I can't talk about. <gasps> oh. Yeah. Oh, Come you're making me nervous. Up. <laughs> I maybe shouldn't have said that, um, but you know, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> now we know there's a secret. Now we must find secrets, it out. <laughs> secrets and lies. Secrets and lies. <laughs> Next. Um. Oh, here's one of these questions. This is from Toby SC for you, Kazumi. Um, which character do you enjoy seeing for the most, Rarity or, or Luna? Well, that's that's a bit of a hard one in a way, just because. I love singing for both, obviously, but I guess because I've gotten to sing with Rarity more and kind of watch her develop more as a character, for now, I would say right now it's still Rarity just because I've been with her for longer. Yep. <laughs> as you're stroking... Yes. Hey, those are what? my curls! What? You are undoing my curls, No, I'm Dusty. not. No, I'm not. Yes, you I'm are. I'm putting more curls in. What are you doing? Has anyone in... told you you don't brush <laughs> curls? What are you doing? <laughs> I'm putting the it's curls in. That. See? See? <laughs> oh, dang. Okay, I'll put her down. I'm putting her down. I'm putting her down. I'm putting her down. 
Justy, oh, put me down, put me down right now. I'm sorry. Thank you. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Oh my God. I'll just I'll just call him Derpy's main now. Okay. Hi. <laughs> Next. <laughs> um, so this is from Mike M. Um, uh, both you, Kazumi, and Shannon Kent are are amazing opera singers. Do you record MLP together? Uh, and if so, do you sing any duets as war warm ups uh, that we don't get to hear? Um. No, unfortunately, I should talk to her about that. No, we've never sang warm ups uh, together. Usually, we just kind of rock up to the studio half an hour before we're called or set to record. And um, there's only been a few occasions for some of the group numbers that we've actually been in the same room together with Ashley Ball and uh, uh, Rebecca to record the group numbers. But uh, usually, we record by ourselves. But maybe we should do a video. I don't know. Maybe this is a potential collaboration that might might <gasps> just happen. <gasps> that I'm would, promising that anything. That would be mind, awesome. Mind. So you know, speaking speaking of singing warm up, why don't you uh, tell us a bit about how you warm up for a for a gig? How I warm up for a gig? Well, I have to get up really early. Uh, say if session is at nine, then I'm up usually at six thirty just uh, to make the drive because I live a far distance away usually uh, mm -hmm. from the studios so just to avoid traffic and just also to get the voice going because at 9 a.m. that's a yeah. that's still pretty early for your vocal cords Way and early. singing a few scales and really just singing through the material mm -hmm. uh, is really what's going to get me warm do you have uh, you have a favorite song that you like to warm up on I mean it doesn't even have to be My Little Pony just basically a favorite song that you like to hum to get the vocal cords warm or something you like to sing to get the vocal cords warmed up? Just that one song that you like to mess with? Um, well, Taylor the Latte Boy was one of, definitely was one of those songs, like mm -hmm. for sure. Just to get the lower registers, because it, 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 it has a bit of a range to it. Mm -hmm. So it, just going through a couple verses of that would definitely help me to get warm. Oh, cool. Definitely. Cool. Because my karaoke warm up is Daniel. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Daniel, yeah. yeah. And Daniel is traveling tonight on a plane. Yeah, I love that one. My I love that song. Crocodile Rock, yeah. Ben. Oh, oh, yeah, that would be cool. Crocodile Run. Yeah, yeah for sure. I can't what? I can't even sing, but I love to hum anything orchestral. <laughs> if I'm, 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 I'm feeling in, yeah. If I'm feeling a really good voice, I do Sweets Ballroom Blitz. Oh, yeah. that's fun, too. That's the full oh, man. The, the, the vocal hits in that thing just knock you out. <laughs> just up and down up and down up and down oh my goodness ah, next uh so this one is from the really new mop uh question for you kazumi i actually put for all favorite singer mm. <laughs> favorite singer of all time wow of all time of all time of all time oh dear these questions <laughs> I always feel so silly when people ask me these questions because I'm like, oh, well, I like everything. And it's yeah. like, no, but I do. Um, definitely of all time. Ella Fitzgerald. Ooh, good uh, choice. Wow. Def Louis Armstrong. Love those two. Uh, definitely Elton John. Mm -hmm. I know we've talked a fair yes. bit about yep. this program. Love, Love him. Love Elton. Um, and... Funny enough, like one of the newer singers, I guess, well, not newer singers, but I guess uh, uh, all the ones I just named, they're mm -hmm. kind of uh, old school, I would say. Yeah. I guess I really do like Katy Perry. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, just the, oh. No, I can see it because if I didn't watch a Carrie, Katy Perry video, I would probably mm -hmm. like Katy Perry. I, I would like her because... I just... Yeah. I, don't, I don't like the image that she portrays when she sings. If you just listen to her singing, she's very yeah. accomplished as a singer. Her songs, oh, very much her songs so. are very, and very well done. But if you watch the video, it's like yeah. it sort of detracts from the artistry of the song. Yeah, I think as a musician, she's quite talented. And I've always, I don't know, I've always liked a broad spectrum of music. I don't really have a favorite genre. Yeah. I, I think, you know, you, you listen to the best of yeah. their genre. The, and I think a lot of the times those guys were the best of the genre for sure. Yeah, it's just, especially like Ella and it's Louis. Ella and, Ellie and Louis. Um, I would have to say my very, very favorite singer of all time. All time. Yeah. 
would be Freddie Mercury. Oh, yeah. Freddie Mercury, because the man could sing anything. Oh, he anything. was great. He's done every, he did everything from doo-wop to opera. I mean, he did everything. So yeah. just number one, you know. Just, mm -hmm. okay. But again, if you, again, with different genres, like if I want to go to heavy metal, I'm thinking mm -hmm. Ronnie James Dio or I'm thinking Ozzy Osbourne because both yeah. of those voices were incredible for their time. You know, and but then you've got the melodic rock and with you know Queen, and then you oh, got oh Queen, I love Queen, yeah Queen with Freddie Mercury, and then you've got you know the the jazz hits of the fifties. You know, it just depends on the era, you know, mm -hmm. and and what you want out of out of that voice at that moment, you know. Absolutely. So, mine is always going to be Billy Joel ever oh, since I was uh, a child. Yeah, I've I've only I've only covered six or seven Billy Joel songs. Yeah, so. Why Should I Worry from Oliver and Company. Oh, there you go. A good song. That was my, I, that was like the first, one of the first songs before like the Milan track that I ever sang as a kid because nice. I just loved, I didn't know it was Billy Joel at the time. I just mm -hmm. thought it was a Not song. many people did. In fact, no. he, he, he actually denies he did that. Really? really? Yeah, to this day, he denies he did it. The one, the one song that I always seem to replay over and over again is I Go to Extreme mm. just because, uh, I don't know, that one and uh, for its unique unique feel to it i love river of dreams because uh -huh. it has that like that uh um black folk uh, mm -hmm. a church kind of music sort mm -hmm. of thing mm -hmm. i don't want mm -hmm. i don't want to i'm trying to make gospel. myself not sound a gospel that's gospel. the word i'm looking for <laughs> it gives a gospel feel to it and it's amazing i love it that's like walking in memphis that song is just it's so perfect walking in memphis oh my god yes yeah, I love that song. Oh, oh, shoot! There was Tell one me you are your other. Christian child. No, but I am tonight. Uh, Wasn't that one? Say, I'm, I'm, I'm going to my Billy Joel track right now. Um, <laughs> there's one other. Down Easter Alexa. That's it. Uh, yeah. Next. Um, where's me questions? I have to close iTunes now. Um, where did I put it? Okay, so this one. Oh no, not this name again. Uh, uh, this is from uh, Katuset. <laughs> Kuga, I just Kuga. can't call it Kuga. Um, Kuga. Uh, this is a different question. Um, to all, what is your favorite pocket monster slash Pokemon? Bullpix! <gasps> um, Bullpix? Bullpix? Yeah. She likes I Bullpix. I love Bullpix. He's adorable. Okay. He does, he's my favorite. I can't, I can't say because I don't follow Pokemon. It is too new for me. Okay. Dusty, yeah, I grew up with that. It's not new. I'm I grew 46 up with years old, hon. Oh, okay. I, oh. Grew, I grew up with Kimba the White Lion, Speed Racer, it... Battle of Planets. Okay, that's fair. Sorry. Yeah. 1970s. There was no such Kazumi. thing as <laughs> Pokemon. If you don't mind me asking, Kazumi, how old are you offhand? 24. 24. You're kidding me. No. No. Uh, I'm actually 25. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I never knew you were Amazing. 24. I'm not going to lie. Amazing. How old do you think I was? I, I'm not going to say. Dude, don't open your mouth because you're in trouble. You're I'm getting in trouble. trouble. You're already you're in, trouble. in trouble for okay. Kazuma. You're already in trouble, buddy. Younger, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm going to give, give you a piece of advice right now. Shut up. Younger or older? <laughs> You know, I grew up to Pokemon 2 ever since grade 3. I loved it a lot. Yeah. yeah. yeah the, it's, only one it's, I know, the only one I know is the freaking yellow squeaky thing. Pikachu. Oh, Pikachu. That's all I know. That's all I know. I don't know any other Pokemon. I know I know Pikachu because he's like the face of the franchise. That's it. That's all I know. Sure. Sure. Okay, my most favorite by far is Ditto. Just because it's the ever since that episode, he's a comedic character for me. <laughs> <laughs> and what's the, what's the kid's name? Nash? Uh, Ash. 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 Yeah. I don't even know the kid's name. <laughs> there you go. Next. I, 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 oh, I actually been going through the classics ever since uh, they put it on Netflix, and mm -hmm. now it's like, oh, nostalgia everywhere. Um, let's I'm, see. I'm actually going through Bubblegum Crisis. Bubblegum Crisis? Yeah, Bubblegum Crisis, which was actually out in the 80s, which is a wonderful, see, I wonderful anime, that's... Japanese animation <laughs> from the 80s. So That's what we're doing right now. Next. <laughs> uh, oh, so this one's from Trailblaze to you, Kazumi. What is your favorite song you sang and didn't sing? Sorry? On the show? Yeah, on the show. Uh, what's your favorite song that you've 
son in in the show and what is your favorite that you haven't seen my, in the show okay my favorite show uh favorite song i've sang um well can it be a group number or of does course. it have yeah. to be? no it can be a group okay. number whatever you want any song at all because like, yeah i love all the solo songs those are all super fun um i'm trying to sorry uh well, I'll start with my the favorite one I didn't sing. Definitely was the Smile song. I thought mm -hmm. Shannon did such a great song with that. Uh, great job, sorry. <laughs> a great job on that song uh, for the Smile song. It, it's very catchy, and I definitely have caught myself singing that in the shower. Cool. Um, as far as one, Winter Wrap-Up keeps wrap -up. coming to mind. That was definitely, it, that was one of the first songs, I believe, in season one mm -hmm. that we sang as a group, and that's it's still pretty catchy. After all these years. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Winter wrap up is that still, one can't die. you know, out of all the <laughs> all the music that's been played in in the show, when I keep coming back to winter wrap up because it's so well built as a song, mm -hmm. and and the, the singing is good, and basically putting that kind of song in a kids show was so groundbreaking. For, oh yeah. You know, it's, it's still groundbreaking. The music. The music effort that goes in this show is groundbreaking and continues to be groundbreaking and it's just wonderful it's just wonderful. Mm -hmm. absolutely agreed yep. next sorry i had to mute my mic for a sec there ah. but i don't want you guys to hear my mechanical keyboard as i'm typing like crazy <laughs> um uh da, 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 da. Oh. It's all about the speed reading I have to do. Yeah, um, so this one's from uh, Quiet Storm. Uh, Kazumi, what is your favorite G1 pony? G1 pony. Generation 1 pony. Yes. Yep. Oh, my goodness. See, unfortunately... <laughs> hey, what you reading, Dusty? Oh, um, oh. Unfortunately, okay, for Generation 1s, I, I was pretty young when I watched the show. Um, and I, of course I'm familiar with this generation because of being on the show so right. I don't really remember a lot of the names to be honest I feel really quite ashamed saying that oh. but I, I, know th I know they had a lot of the similar names but I don't really feel like I had a favorite pony mm -hmm. back then just because I just love the show in its entirety um, and yeah again I was very young and I didn't really I, I don't mm -hmm. really think I saw the show as oh individual characters it was just more like oh my little Pony, I love this show. Yeah. So. Yeah, but there was an Applejack in G one. Yes, and I believe there was a, a rarity back then rarity. too. Or. Yep. Yeah, yep. I yep. think there was, and there was a Cheerilee. There was I remember Cheerilee that. Yeah. And a Firefly. Mm -hmm. see, see, the the going the going story is that I dated Cheerilee in high school. Yeah. Did you what? <laughs> yeah. Because it was the eighties, right? And yes. She was there, and I was there in the eighties, and I grew up in the eighties, so we we actually dated in high school. Wow. Yeah. So we, we gotten back together on Facebook to talk a little bit, but you know, lives go in their separate <laughs> ways. <laughs> we actually had a drink last week. It was it was very nice. Next. You could tell he just takes this a whole level. <laughs> yeah, we we take it to a whole level around here. <laughs> That's so funny. It's like cricket, cricket. Yep. <laughs> one, one, one of my friends who's an artist actually drew me a little badge which has me and my high school varsity jacket and an 80s cheerily together oh <laughs> it's very really, cute it's really cute <laughs> very sweet yeah next uh one second oh pff, what what yeah i keep what? opening up the wrong programs <laughs> I, I got like five six different things minimized here Dude, close, um close the game programs till after the show okay they're not open i swear to okay. you the music programs are though are. <laughs> um oh so this one is uh this one um oh wait what where did i bet there it is uh so this one is from uh dirty can he actually made uh he actually made like this this now, since summer's coming up everyone is craving ice cream and he actually made this ice cream, which he calls the Whack Attack, which was uh, inspired by no whacking. Okay. And and the, it's actually in a uh, an ice cream store now. Hmm. Um, they actually take commissions, I guess you could say, hmm. or whatever. But uh, his question to ev to everyone is, what is your favorite ice cream flavor? Oh, how about you, Kazoo? Can I name two? Sure. 
Okay, one would be hedgehog. What? What's like a hedgehog? Hedgehog. Like hedgehog. What's hedgehog? What? You don't know what? <laughs> oh, like you know a hazel. It's a hazelnut praline. Oh, is it? You don't know what a hedge. Oh, maybe it's a Canadian. It's thing. a Canadian thing, I think. What? Where I, do you I, get I, a hedgehog? I, I, it would have to be. It have to be way Western Canada where because do I don't get it here. I don't get it here in my part of Alberta. <laughs> I don't think it's a Dairy Queen flavor. It's not no, a Dairy Queen. No, 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 Def definitely not a Dairy Queen flavor. Okay, but... Oh no. Okay. Well, it's a hazelnut truffle. Nice. So Ooh, that's okay, what. It... Nice. That and coconut. Coconut. Well, mix mm -hmm. them together. Wow. Yeah, they're delicious. delicious. Um, You're making... I, I'm old school. I still love butter pecan. Mm, uh, a good butter yum. pecan. Oh my god. Oh. oh. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think I'm going to get started after the show. Now that I'm, I'm like, thinking <laughs> about it. Good. Yeah. How about you, Scrooge? Yeah. Oh, by far. Uh, it was my brother's birthday just recently on June 10th. And uh, every time her birthday comes up, we just always get those amazing Dairy Queen uh, oh, yeah. Oreo ice cream, ice cream, cream oh. cakes. Oh, 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 they're so good. Oh, they're so good. <laughs> yes. yes. We, had, we had the Dairy Queen the in my hometown. The best. Yeah. Yeah. Dairy Which Queen one? in my hometown. The part in the middle is the best, yeah, you know, the with the fudge yes, and the crumbly the bit. And the chocolate. Yeah. Oh. I always I always the last. I, yeah, I do the same thing. I carve right around it, and then I eat that middle yeah. part as a cookie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had a Dairy Queen. We had a Dairy Queen in my hometown. And, of course, your, your regional Dairy Queens always have something that's different from every other Dairy Queen in the country, right? So, in, in Detroit, we had our own ginger ale called Verner's, and it was ginger ale to the ninth power. It was, like, really gingery. So the local Dairy Queens would put that in a float, right, with vanilla soft serve, and call it a Boston Cooler. And it, I, every time I go back home, it's like, I gotta go to Dairy Queen and get a Boston Cooler. Oh, it's so good. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. So. That's wonderful. Yes. Next. Ooh, hiccups. Um. Sorry. 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 <laughs> so like, I'm sorry. 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 <laughs> uh, okay, so now I, so there's been about five, six, seven different people constantly asking this. Um, I'll just take it from Bot One One Seven. Okay. Um, I know Kazumi, you haven't really heard much of our fandom's music, but one that everyone's been suggesting that you should check out is called Children of the Night. Oh yeah. Oh okay. Oh yeah. And it's a Luna. It's a it's it, this the the singer. Uh, it's it's about Luna, and and the music is just. Oh my god! I even listened to it this morning uh, with my friend Jamie, and we'll make uh, sure to get you a link after the show. Yeah, we'll have to give you a link. But but the question that everyone's been asking is, you need to do your own version of the song. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's great. a busy person. Just let her listen to it first. Oh, but thank you, no, but thank, <laughs> thank you very much. And I'm I'm terribly sorry. I apologize. I must apologize to the fans for not having listened to more of uh, the fandom music yeah. that's out there. Um, it's not that I don't want to. It's just, no. yes, it, uh, again, like, it's just timing. But definitely I will make more of an effort it's, to it's do like, so. Okay, make, make sure you step back because it's like drinking from the fire hose. Because there's a <laughs> ton of it. Oof. Ponyphonic. <laughs> I got to send you some Ponyphonic. Because yes, he, he, he does this orchestral awesome. Oh, oh that sounds cool. Yeah, and he, did a, he actually did a version of um, Winter Wrap-Up, which is really good. So, yeah, I'll send you those two. Thank you. Cool. Next. Uh, I'll actually bring this one from Bot117 as well. A uh, question for all. If you can write one episode for My Little Pony, what will you have the episode about and what will you have happen? Ah. Oh, oh, gosh. That's a, that's a... Oh, no. <laughs> it's one I of those. I think of a plot really fast. Oh, okay. Um, you keep thinking, I'll give mine. Okay, here we go. So, here is my episode. The episode actually is two stories going out at the same time. You've got the main six having to take care of some problem, but the real story is how it affects the background characters. Mm. So basically you've got all this stuff that they have to do, but never have we actually seen what happens to any of the background characters and how their lives get affected by, say, a sleeping dragon or you know, Discord taking over vines in the middle of Ponyville. Let's say... You know, a second main six, like Octavia, Vinyl Scratch, Lyra, Bon Bon, um, Rose Luck. Dr. Hooves and, and Derpies, come on. And Derpy, okay. So how does, say, the latest, greatest 
Equestria is going to die if the main six don't do something, affect those ponies in their that's daily really lives. Good. Gosh, you're good. Yeah, so oh, that's that's my that's, episode. That's good. That's 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 a smart idea. I like that. Um, the idea, so. idea that I just kind of summed up, like I was thinking of, um, uh, you know, trip to Manhattan, and mm-hmm. I was thinking almost either somehow the whole My Little Pony cast, like whether it's Discord, the Main Six, um, the Cutie Mark Crusaders, or whatnot, they put on a musical mm-hmm. of some sort, like the um, or. Uh, you know the opening scene of a chorus line, the five, six, seven, right. eight, da 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 da. I don't know if they had a dance call and it was an audition. Oh, there you go. Audition for a big musical. That would be my episode. Yeah. All right. Uh, this would be funny. How about this? When they were okay. in Manhattan for Rarity's episode, Rarity Takes Manhattan, a yes. casting agent actually saw Rainbow Dash mm-hmm. and loved her look. And she tracks her down in Ponyville and will not take yes. no for an answer to have her star in Spider Mare into the dark. <laughs> what do you think? No? Yes, <laughs> so you're better at this than I am. <laughs> I can't even think of a single thing. I really can't. I don't read or write fanfics. I don't. I don't have that kind of uh, mentality uh, on creating that sort of stuff. Um, all I can ever think about every time I hear it is is I want to see an episode that connects with the uh, the comics yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah that I, would be cool. Because I love I love the comics. They're mm-hmm. amazing. They're the comics brilliant. Are amazing people. If you're not getting the comics, go get the comics. Shame. Because get the shame. comics. They are awesome. <laughs> Andy, they are knocking it out of the park. That's and they're awesome. amazing. They need to and go and and get the comics. This newest issue, I just been going freaky crazy over, and it's coming out on the twenty fifth. So it's oh, nine days away. Yes. <laughs> freaky deaky. Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, that that sounds really good. Yes. That's awesome. Um. Um. Questions. Um. um. Uh, uh, yeah, that's exactly what I'm doing. Is I'm just bringing up the next question. <laughs> Is it from that guy? One second, I'm making sure I'm reading this right. Um, my eyes are just bothering me a lot today. I've been wearing contacts, switching the glasses. <laughs> I'm just trying to refocus myself. Um, no. Okay. Um, so this one is from... <laughs> Shit, 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 Shit. Huh? Resident superhero. <laughs> I'll stay brony, my friends. Okay. Yes. Scourge to the soggy milk. <laughs> Saber of the cornflake. <laughs> yeah. What is what is James? What does our superhero want to know about this week? A uh, question for the, see, I, uh, 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 so um, this is kind of the same as the other one, but not really. Uh, this is what is one element that has not been in the show before we like to see in season five, Equestria Girls two or beyond. What do you mean by element? The element By of lead, element. the element of iron, the element of heavy water, what? Oh, <laughs> oh God, what was it, James? You posted it to me, and I need to find his post. <laughs> I guess, like, maybe, like, it, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Elements of story making, I guess. Elements of story making, um, hmm. So, one of the things they really haven't touched on is maybe a moral uh, like a moral of the story that they yeah, haven't yeah. really touched on one, well one of the thing one of the major the major glaring storylines they have not touched is why Scootaloo can't fly <laughs> I don't know if that's Every, a moral though well the, yes. the thing is it's it's the giant elephant in the room because toddlers fly um freaking uh, over half of the pegasi in Almost all the youth Pegasi we see can fly. Why can't Scootaloo? What? Why? What's going on there? What is the story? You know, did her mom drink when she was pregnant? Um, is she handicapped? Is you know what's going on here? Um, so, I think that might be one of the elements that he's talking about. Okay, there's a huge glaring story hole here that could be filled, as long as they're, you know, um, brave enough to take that shot. 
you know, in a little girl show. So mm. what, what's going on here? So, it, it, you know, it's, it's only a joke for so long until it becomes, you know, glaringly, you know, this needs to get taken care of. Why can't she fly? So... Well, maybe that's just an episode that writers are working on as we speak. <gasps> I mean, no, no, no. I'm not giving suggestions. Oh, I'm not know. giving a plot. I'm not I'm giving suggestions. Like, we don't know that everything is going on. Kazumi knows nothing. I, know, I have no behind, behind no the behind scenes, the scenes knowledge. Nothing. Right. There's, there's, I don't. There's no I musical don't. reprise by Scootaloo about why she can't fly. <laughs> no, I'm just, no, I'm just saying potentially that could be a case. Potentially, but no, potentially I, there could be a song in the middle of that, that episode that... Because a, a very sad <laughs> reprise by Scootaloo of why she can't fly, but it's really not happening. We don't, know, we're not sure that it could happen. It'd be probably be awesomely amazing, but no, it's not happening. No, that's something I would hope for. Yes. But we, as we, far we as hope. it actually happening, yes. that's that's a that's a we totally different thing. <laughs> we could hope for that. We could hope for that awesome, awesome episode where Scootaloo learns to fly or finds out why she can't fly, but and have a beautiful song in the middle of it. But no, we don't know that it's happening. No, we don't know. Um, but yeah, that would be nice. That it would. Nice. Next. I still would like to see some more background pony stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um. Ooh. Okay, so this is from Flare Cobra to you, Kazumi. If Rarity and Luna yeah. were to do a duet, ooh. what style of music do you think they would sing best to? I think. You know, so I think something like um. Pop opera, Ooh. like something that's easy, easy listening, something that's very melodic and kind of leaning towards the classical side of things, mm -hmm. but at the same time, not like not completely opera at all. Like it would be very popish. So pop opera. Okay, so like um, Quadrophenia. Sure. There you go. Because <laughs> Quadrophenia is all set in England and it's got royalty in it and all that kind of stuff, but. Mostly yeah. about the youth and how they, they, they're they going against, you know, establishment and all that kind of stuff. So maybe Quadrophenia. Definitely not Hedwig and the Angry Inch. No. no. Yeah. <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> I almost got you there, Kazumi, didn't I? <laughs> I know. That just that took me completely off guard. I was like, whoa, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. <laughs> Although Lena Hall is a, is a Pegasus sister now. So. <laughs> yes. Lena Hall, who's in that in New York, is a Pegasus sister. She's come out. Wow. Yes. She takes every opportunity on camera to say friendship is magic. So wow. Hopefully we can get her on this program. I don't know. I'm trying. I don't even know who to ask. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to find her agent so I can actually find her and say, hey, you want to come on the show? But yeah, that's like one of my top level. Her or Weird Al Yankovic. It's like if I could get any of those two on my show, that would be cool. But who knows? <laughs> that's, the, that's the thing to strive for the thing you can't get you know, just keep trying keep your feet on the ground keep reaching for the stars <laughs> yep next <laughs> oh so this one is ooh so this one is from Sour Milk <laughs> Sour Milk actually is here knowing that James Justice is only feet away <laughs> you literally got, text you, away you know what you, you've got a pair buddy Okay, what's the song you want to know? Uh, question is, uh, Kazumi, uh, would you want to voice a character, i.e. not singing, in the show? And if so, any particular type of character? I would love, of course I would love to voice a character. Um, oh. Any type of character. Uh, wait, what do you mean by any type? Like, just like would whether it's bad or, ooh, I don't know. I think it'd be kind of. Would you think, I think it'd be fun to voice a, a villain. Ooh, yeah. I, I want could. more villain music. Oh. <laughs> Wouldn't yep. that be wonderful? It would. That just be yes. Hilarious. Yeah. To sing for Rarity and Luna, and then to voice a villain. I think that would be that would just be wonderful. That'd be cool. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Because we haven't had a villain music since, of course, since Chrysalis in season two finale, yeah. and. Uh, uh, and that was one of the most amazing songs ever because it's so grim and eerie. <laughs> well, tell the writers and maybe, maybe just maybe, maybe. Hey, we got 26 episodes coming soon. So maybe one, maybe two, maybe maybe the opening salvo of one and two in the season. Imagine, imagine if Chris villain. came back and did another <laughs> song. Yes. Uh, I'm going cool nuts. <laughs> Kind of day that I dreamt said I was small. Next. 
Uh, so this one's from this one's from Late Metal for you, Kazumi. Uh, what type of process do you use for songs? Like, are the dress and generosity that include both singing, uh, that include both speaking and singing roles for rarity? Do you voice match Tabitha and deliver the lines we hear on the show between parts of the song, or do you record a placeholder in the music so that dialogue can be added in later? Good question. Uh, definitely, yes, very good question. But no, Tabitha does all the speaking for it. So, um, you know, there'll of course be a, a little get break in the music, a mm -hmm. dance break or a little action break, and Tabitha will take it over from there. Um, and she'll record that in a separate recording uh, from myself. Ah, so do, do they, when you, here's a follow up question. So when you're actually singing, that part do they actually have tabitha's vocals already in there in in the song uh, so basically you're singing and then ta and then you break and then tabitha's vocals come in and then you sing are you actually no, singing usually, the different part? yeah i sing it we lay down the singing track first get the music all done with and then i think tabitha comes in at a separate time and just oh, records okay. the lines okay, so in between you, what i've already laid down yeah so it's you first tabitha second yeah cool next cool 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 um Ooh, so this one's from Toby SC to you, Kazumi. Uh, any specific singer you want to sing a duet with? Not MLP related or that too? My Little Pony or any... So My Little Pony related or not? Right. Anyone I, I would like to... Go for both. Go for both. Anyone I'd like to sing a duet with? Hmm. Hmm. I'd like to sing with Rebecca. Rebecca Choquette. We've, uh, we've done... A theater show with each other before and I am a big fan of hers and I love what she does on the show of course nice. so I think that would be fun like for Rarity or Luna or one of the characters uh, to sing with Twilight it'd be fun mm -hmm. um, as a duet with someone not involved with My Little Pony fantasy duet oh hell I would like to sing one with Elton John there you that go. was always a fantasy growing yes. up of course. Yes. I know so much but it's true it's true mm -hmm. it's twoo it's twoo Yes. Twoo, twoo, twooky woo. Yes. That would be awesome. <laughs> oh, I love Elton. He's so talented. Oh, Elton. My oh. friend Elton. Oh, Elton. You're so masculine. <laughs> oh, so tall. You're so cool. Next. What? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, Kay. Next. Okay, let's see here. Yeah. Uh, so this one is also from Trailblaze. So, Kazumi, how did you come up with your pony's cutie mark? My pony's cutie mark? Um, well, because I'm a big lover of Doctor Who. I've yep. been a big fan of it uh, for a long time now. And uh, so I really wanted that, the Sonic Screwdriver incorporated with it. Mm -hmm. And, of course, uh, the music notes, just because I'm known on the show for my singing. So... And then I wanted something, of course, to bring it all together. So I, was, I just thought, okay, a heart, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And that's how that was born. I like that. I still haven't, I, I got to look up and see the picture. Oh, see, I haven't checked it out yet. It's right up on the <laughs> screen. So you'll see it in the rear. That I will. Yes. I could just hit play now and then see it. But my internet is awful. Your internet is awful <laughs> um, there, the wasteland. It is. Well, at least it's not storming all as, as it has been, so I'm glad it's the I'm glad it stopped raining and everything. Yeah. Um, ooh, ooh. So this one is from my good friend Imperius. Oh God, <laughs> I forgot. I forgot to hit play and suddenly heard a, a voice echo in my voice and it freaked me out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, why is it doing that? I don't understand. Um, so, uh, for this one for my friend Perius, uh, question is, oh, actually, it's actually his, his birthday on the 22nd of this month. Oh. And, uh, he was wondering if you, cause he, if you would be able to sing him an early birthday song from my Princess Luna. From Princess Luna, uh, right now? If you like. If you want. Uh, okay, sure. Just wait, let me find her first. Yeah, yeah, I'll find uh, her. Yeah. Yeah. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to what's his what's his name? Imperious. Sorry? Imperious. Imperious. Sorry, Imperious. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Nice. <laughs> Lovely. That was more of a 
jazzy or Luna, okay. but it's hard to keep. Sorry, all, Imperius, It's I hard to keep all those things. subjects straight. Yes, there's many, many subjects. Princess Luna has many, many subjects. So. She, she does. Sorry, Imperius. It's okay. <laughs> Um, um, so this one is from uh, Strucker, v- Strucker Vellone. Uh, just want to make sure you got this. Dusty, earlier I believe you said that there would be a Nightmare Nights. I have not seen an announcement for Nightmare Nights themselves. Did you let that slip accidentally or something? No, I said Nightmare Nights. Okay. I said Nightmare Nights at the, end sure. of, at the end of the convention season. I said my Nightmare Nights is coming up and it's going to be me and it's going to be full papers and it's going to be Tabitha and it's going to be... Yeah, I said all that. I was just making sure... At that point, I actually was running down grabbing a drink. <laughs> so. Or I'll die of dehydration. Yes. Err. Er. Oh, yeah, here we go. Um, Have you ever been to any conventions, Kazumi, at all? I've, I've been to one in Seattle. Um, just, uh, oh, yes. Well, yep. Almost coming two years ago, I guess, now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, it was the first ever free Northwest, Northwest. Yep. in Seattle. Mm-hmm. And uh, awesome. I, But I will be at BronyCon in Baltimore. Yes. And that will be my second convention I've ever gone to. So I'm very excited about that. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So the question from mm-hmm. trailer is to Kazumi. What was your most favorite con memory? And what are you looking forward to at future cons? I think... Um, my favorite con memory from Seattle, because I think that was my big introduction to the fans, because I never really seen mm-hmm. um, bronies in a group before. I I just had never really experienced the fandom in person. Mm-hmm. And so I think that was walking around the stalls and seeing the fans and the art that they produced and just the love of the show was was just wonderful for me. And that was my favorite uh, memory from that. And just to experience that again in Baltimore is what I'm really, 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 really looking forward to. And now that fans, I guess, um, have met me before and they know what I look like, mm-hmm. it, it should be fun. Awesome. It's going to be great. Mm-hmm. You, know what, you know what time it is, Curry? Oh, it's that time, huh? Fudge cakes, yeah. It's that time. <laughs> so you need to give me that one wonderful, awesome last question you've been saving. Well, there, uh, before I forget, I know a lot of people are asking where the you know what scurry thing is. There was none of this episode. Yeah, because... there was no, there was no you know what scurry because scurry is actually working on a special one. So if he, I can figure it out, yes, it's he, unbelievably he hard. Time. Well, yeah, it's of course it's unbelievably hard. <laughs> it's not if if it wasn't unbelievably hard, everybody would be doing it. But you've done it before, and I have faith in you. <laughs> I know you can do it. <laughs> so yeah, there's a special stay screwy, you know, spe- a special, you know, you know what screwy coming up. So we didn't have a know what screwy. I'm sorry. This time this will be our first show missing it since seven in a row. But we have a special one working on. So. Has it really been seven? Oh. It's been seven, buddy. You've done seven of those things. Scary. <laughs> Scary. I know. So give me that one question. Truth be told, I'm actually ran out of questions. <gasps> so <laughs> questions. Okay. Uh, I, I was, you know, I, what, I was I literally on you know that what? last Shh. question. Shh. You know what we're going to do? We're going to flip this around. You know what, Kazumi? You, yeah. You ask us that last awesome question. <gasps> oh, my gosh. Oh, no. Uh, pressure's on now. Yeah. Um, uh, to both your uh, self and Dusty or just whatever to the want. brony yeah. fans? To, to whatever, if it's the brony stuff, I'll try to answer it. And if it's to us, I'll answer it anyway. I guess, uh, yeah, this is curious. Uh, Coming from a performer on the show, Mm -hmm. what, I guess, what was the most attractive thing, I guess, about My Little Ponies that drew you into the show to begin with? Well, for me... um, Yeah, that'd be... Okay, for me, it comes down to... I've been an animation fan since early Disney. Mm -hmm. So I've liked any good animation. From, mm-hmm. you know, Donald Duck versus Chippendale to Cinderella to uh, Disney's Robin Hood to, you know, the, the first wave of Japanese animation coming out of, you know, being dubbed into English. Um, uh, any of it. And then all of a sudden, um, I was introduced to this by my friends. And, you know, the first two episodes are absolutely, you know, knock it out of the park. You know, Nightmare Moon's a mm-hmm. wonderful character. And the whole storyline is just wonderful. 
I'm going, okay, we'll give this a shot. And it got better and better and better and continues to get better. So the animation's good, the writing's great, the acting is wonderful, the music just is the icing on top of it. So when you get something that's really that good, there's just almost no reason not to love it. You know, it's, it just gives you, it gives you a warm feeling when you come home, sit down to dinner, and you can put on any one of a hundred different episodes that you love and it makes you smile. And that's one. There's no, I mean, people try to, you know, poo poo that you sit down and you watch a cartoon for little girls. I, I say it's not a cartoon for little girls. I say it's a cartoon. Okay. Yeah. It's a cartoon agreed. for everybody, not just because it's marketed toward the pink aisle. It just because it's marketed toward the pink aisle doesn't mean it takes those handcuffs and keeps them on. It breaks them. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't have to be shoved into the small little space that society thinks it should be in. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you take the chains off your brain and sit down and watch a number of episodes, you might find yourself surprised. I think that's wonderful, Dusty. Yeah, and I, I, you're absolutely right, 100%. Yeah. So that is mostly where most of us are coming from. So that's, mm -hmm. that's what I like. So with that, I'm going to remind you all that we have a T-shirt out there at Redbubble. If you go to redbubble.com and you look up Everfree Network, you will find this T-shirt, which is hopefully going to be replaced soon once Trish gets through all of her BronyCon assignments <laughs> because that's where i get my t-shirt designs is from trish so we still have this one up there we'd love to see you wearing it out there at the conventions um so please check that out um and pick one up um okay second uh, announcement amy and i amy my wonderful girlfriend are going to bronies the musical this weekend uh sunday the 22nd hope to see some of you there uh, so we're going to ride the motorcycle down on saturday watch it on sunday and then ride home so it's gonna be a wonderful weekend for us um I would like to thank Kazumi for taking thank time you. out of her day to come and talk to mm -hmm. us. Um, Ralph at Red Mansion for making it happen. Screwy for doing everything he does for this show. Uh, Cowboy Dave for making us look so, so good on the YouTubes. Um, EFN for giving us this platform. Care to win, my second in command, my landlord, and my buddy for making all of this happen. Amy, my wonderful girlfriend, and you out there. Every time we turn that camera on and we make fools out ourselves, for some reason you show up. So thank you for continuing to come. Um, one last thing. Everybody knows that a wonderful person uh, lost his battle with Parkinson's this week, and that is Casey Kasem. Um, and I'm going to say this. Uh, this is my long-distance dedication to you, Casey. Um, from the time I first heard you as Mark on Battle of the Planets, in the early 70s, Shaggy from Scooby-Doo, and then your weekly radio show, I always wanted to do what you did. Um, I always wanted to entertain people, and I finally realized it, and here I am. Uh, in no small part because of you. And I thank you, and uh, sleep well. You've earned it. And with that, we're out of here. Um, in two weeks, we'll have, a new, um, we'll have a new guest. I don't know who that is yet. Uh, I'll be working on that, uh, and we will be here for you. Even if we don't have one, we'll be here. So uh, meet us in two weeks on the 30th, and then we will... Be right into Everfree Northwest the next weekend. And boy, are we looking forward to that. So we will catch oh, you yeah. all. We'll catch you all in two weeks. And have fun. Stay safe. Be excellent to each other. Say goodbye, Kazumi. Bye. Thank you, guys. You're welcome, babe. Later. Du, 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 du. Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. We hate to leave you, but we'll be back soon. Good night, sweetheart. Good night. Good night, sweetheart. Good night.